Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So here we're going to go through an exam style question focused on the planarity algorithm. Now before we do this we're going to firstly define how to use a planarity algorithm and what are the four steps used to go for it. Now step one is to figure out whether or not this graph is a Hamiltonian cycle. Now a Hamiltonian cycle is just simply telling us that you start from one point say A and you must go through every point exactly once and return to the same point. So start from A, return to A, and this is how we could do it. You go from A to B, then B to say D, then D to E, E to F, to C to G to H, and finally A. And voila guys, this is a Hamiltonian cycle. And this is exactly what we need for the next few steps. Now, before moving on to step two, it's important to understand what a planar graph is, because the question asked, us to use the planarity algorithm to determine whether this graph is planar. Well, a planar graph is just simply where you have one edge, like AF, and it can't be crossed by any other edges. In this case, we can see AF is crossed by HB and HD. So you can see that M I just drew is an example of a planar graph, whereas the bottom one is not a planar graph because an edge crosses it. So that is our first condition. Now, our second condition is using the Hamiltonian cycle to redraw this graph in the new order with A, B, D, E, F, C, G, H, and back to A. So because this is an aim point graph, we can kind of draw it as an octagon. So we'll start with A here, B, and then back e. to the finish. And then label in order based on what we found. We found A, then B, then we went to then G, B. and finally H. Now what you have to do here is once you draw this, you also have to kind of draw the, the edges inside this graph. So try and remember where they went. So for example, if we look at A, it went from A to E and A to F. So we draw here. I'm going to use a red pen. So it went to A to E and then A to F. Then do the same for B. B went from B to H and B to D, which we've already done, and also B to E. And, and then finally D. H to C. And that's it. So this is basically all the ones we have so far. So this is step two. Next, we're going to label all our edges inside the eight point octagon. So what we have, so we've got a, F, and A, E. We also have B, H. And lastly, we have C, H. Okay. And now, guys, for number four, the final step, we're going to now determine whether or not certain edges are going to be inside or outside the system. So all the edges that's crossing, like you see the, the, this H, B crossing this A, F, and A, E, that might have to go outside because we want to have a clean planar graph inside and then all the outside ones will, will turn into loops. We're going to determine which one are actually loops. To do that, we're going to define two things. We're going to now say, let I represent the inside edges. We're going to define one. And let O be the outside edges. So outside edges. Okay, let's do this. So I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do it here. Yeah? So let's just delete all this stuff here. We don't need this anymore. So we can say this. Okay, so we're going to say now, let's start with AF. So let's say let um, AF be inside. So if AF is inside, let's have a look at AF. So if I highlight the AF, we can see exactly what's crossing it. Well, we can see both HB, what we call the BH, and DH are crossing it. So therefore, if if this is out inside, then both BH and also DH are outside edges. So they're going to be moved to the outside. Next, let's pick a new one, AE. So we're going to keep on going in order. Let AE be inside. What happens now? If AE is inside, so let's highlight AE. We find that both BH and DH, again, are also the same. So the same story applies. So we can do this. Next, let one. That, so, so now that we define BH and DH, we can kind of ignore them. So let's look at BE. If BE was inside, BE, well, only DH. So again, this is only DH is the one. So you can kind. Of, so it's basically the same thing. Next one, let, and just keep going. Yeah, let. Let's say okay, we don't DH. Let's, let's look at GF now. Let GF be inside. If GF is inside, where's GF? We can see that CH is crossing. So therefore, CH 
is our side and that's it all seven have been covered because we've already specified three of them bh dh and ch as being outside whereas the af ae b gf will be inside what this means now is that when we resketch this entire graph we're going to do it like this so let's resketch it a b that a b h and now we're going to be very careful we're only going to put the four inside um, edges in okay so a f a e and look what happens b e and also g f voila you can see it becomes a planar graph no intersection and now for the outside one b h d h and c h b h is this so b goes all the way around it's a loop to h so you go next one dh so d just be very careful and lastly guys we have ch and that's it that's the end of the question i hope you this helps you guys and if you guys have any more questions please let me know otherwise i shall see you guys next time